I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to take a look at IP addresses. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how we can get the IP address of the currently running compute application on a computer somewhere, our Microsoft Access application, and put that either into a table or into a message box or just basically retrieve it so that we can use it for any purpose. Let's get to it. Interested in more topics and discussion like this? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, so fun one today. Many thanks to those who requested this topic. You can see I got this file here called access underscore IP address. And I'm going to click on the create tab and we're gonna go over and we're gonna select module. And I'm gonna resize this window here. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're creating a module that can be accessed from anywhere in the application. So any form or report or anything like that can run this function that we're about to create here. And so you can see I'm putting in function IP address. I'm just calling the name of the function IP address. And you can call that whatever you like there. And I'll put a note at the top just for future reference saying returns the IP address uh, or addresses of the current computer because some of you might have computers with multiple um, you know uh, NIC cards in them or network interface cards and things like that and so this will return a list of those uh, but typically it returns a single IP address and so that's where we're gonna get started so the first few variables that we're going to create will be variant uh, variables and so I'm just going to put the uh, dim statement there with an object for uh, the network interface cards it's kind of like a collection and then one for an individual card and then we'll create a variable for our IP address our computer and then we'll create one for the list of IPs which might only be one but we'll leave the option open for you know, multiple IP addresses because there might be more than one uh, uh, network adapter attached to our computer or a user's computer. Um, so once we have our variables defined there, I'm going to set that uh, network interface cards object, the uh, object NICs there, and we'll set that equal to the uh, get object, and we're going to use the Windows Management Instrumentation Service which runs under SVC host and that's gonna give us uh, the instances of our network adapters essentially and what that's gonna give us is the sort of a collection of all of the adapter information for each of the adapters and we'll get that by using the Win32 network adapter configuration and once we've got that into an object there, it makes it very nice and easy uh, for us to sort of iterate through. And we can do that using our second variant uh, variable there, the NIC object for one network interface card. So for e each, of the <clears throat> each of the NICs we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna loop through and we're gonna take a look and see what kind of IP address we get. So in order to do that, we'll use our trusty for next loop, uh, where we can say for each, which essentially means uh, for each of the objects inside of this collection, we're gonna do something. And in this case, we're going to use an if then, and we're gonna check if the network interface is IP enabled, then we're going to grab the address from it. So. We'll do our if then block there with an end if on the end, and then on the inside of that, we'll put uh, the IP string or STRIP uh, is equal to the network interface object, card object there, IP address zero, which is typically IPv4, so that's your standard IP address object. And uh, once we've got that loaded into our IP, uh, variable, but we're also going to initialize the STRIPS string there that is for multiple IP addresses 
Uh, we're going to initialize that to an empty string and then here we'll check and see if as we loop through each of our network interface cards you know if there is something in that string then we're going to add a comma before we add the next IP address and so we'll do that here so then we'll say you know our STR IPS is equal to itself and then our IP string that we just got from the uh, from the uh, network interface card so there's our STR IP we've used it to append onto the end of our list of IPs and that's exactly what we want to see in general it's going to be just a single IP I think uh, for most people that they see and so that is pretty much the end of that function the last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set the value of the IP address function to the string of IPs that we collected I'll hit control S for save there and then we need to give our module a name to save it so I put mod IP on there and we are good to go so from there uh, we can do some quality checks I'll do a debug compile that's a good step to take in order to you know check and make sure there aren't any glaring errors in your code you can also put option explicit at the top of your uh, at the top of your module there and that will definitely make things stand out if you made any typos or anything like that so I think we're good to go here let's give it a try and see if I broke it yet um, so we'll do our question mark in the immediate window so that means we're going to call a function or ask for a value and we'll do question mark IP address and hit enter and there we go there's the uh, IP address on on my little network here um, now if you were connecting to a database uh, in the cloud um, you're still going to get that uh, address because that's the the address that your computer has in its sort of local environment so let's go ahead and create a new subroutine here we'll do a show IP address subroutine now there's a million ways that you could use your IP address that you've collected uh, in this case what we'll do is we will show it in a message box and so we'll do the same thing that we did before uh, we're gonna uh, dim on str IP for our IP address and then we'll set that to our function IP address and then we'll simply you know give a message box saying you, your IP address is and then the IP address of your computer now uh, that that's one way that you could use your IP address that you've collected we'll also show how to log it into a table because uh, you might have a local table or a remote table and so now I can go ahead you can see this is a sub that I created so this is not in the immediate window I can put the cursor in the subroutine and hit run and it is going to give me a message box saying this is my IP address and that is exactly what I want to see there but I might want to do something more in depth like say logging the IP address uh, for a certain function maybe you have a certain function in your database and you want to know the IP address of, of wherever that was you know executed from or whatever um, you can also collect the username now make sure to check out my video on username I will put uh, the card at the top here so check that out and so uh, here we go so I've created a table I've got three fields in it got an IP or a log ID an IP address and a date stamp and I'm just going to create uh, a default on my date stamp field there and that's gonna make it very nice and easy so I've hit save you can see the uh, the ID is not showing there but the log ID is an auto number and the message you saw there is the standard message asking which field should be the primary key suggesting to use the log ID because it's an auto number and I said yes to that so moving on we can now have a subroutine that will log the IP address whenever something happens um, and so we can do that too we can have our log IP address subroutine and we'll do much the same thing that we did in the other subroutine 
with a collection of the IP address into a string, except this time we're also going to have a string for an SQL statement, just for an example. Uh, so just like we did before, strip will be the value coming back from the IP address function. And then I'll create a little SQL string here, uh, insert into TBL log uh, the IP address that we collected. And so the date stamp is, if you remember, I created that with a default. And so I don't need to insert that uh, date stamp. I can just insert one value. The log ID is auto number, so that's auto generated. Um, and then the date stamp is also uh, auto generated, so I don't need to insert that. So all we need to do is insert into our IP address field uh, the values that we collected. And so I'll use a current db.execute for that. That runs silently, and that will put an en entry into our table exactly the way we want to see it. So I'll do a debug compile just like we did before. Uh, have one sort of last look over our code there and then I can hit run and uh, you can see it did run and executed and there we go I ran it again. So we should see two rows in our table and we can open that uh, log table. So there we go we've got our IP address that was logged twice with a date stamp on it and that is exactly what we want to see and that is how you can get the IP address for your Microsoft Access application. Looking for easy project management and time entry for your team? Make sure to check out my time entry solution. The link is in the description.